4 to 8, and the Word of God says, Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for devotion, persecuting the church, and for righteousness, based on the law, innocent. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ. May God bless the reading of his word. Thank you, Ellie. It's a wonderful reading of the Apostle Paul. And a wonderful verse uh, that we have here, uh, Paul talking about some of his capabilities, some of the things he has going for him, things about himself that he values. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's an interesting list that he has here. It actually uh, kind of goes with a lot of what we've been talking about this month about the Apostle Paul. Is, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul, he was sent on a mission and he was very successful at it. Sent on this mission to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And one thing we've been looking at is why was he so successful? What did he have going for him uh, that made him able to do this great mission that he had? And we talked about how he had good people there to help him. And that's very important. He also had authority. And he had God-given authority and God-given power to be able to conduct this mission. And that was good news for us today because it means to us, God may give us missions to do, leadership roles to take on, but he's going to give us the authority. He's going to give us the power. He's going to give us what we need to take on these missions that we take on in our life, this calling that God has for us. And today we see another thing Paul had. And another reason he was successful and so good at following what God wanted for him in his life, and he, he had amazing capabilities. Amazing capabilities. You look at Paul and you think, Boy, there, who, who better could God have chosen to do this mission to bring the good news from the Hebrew people to the Gentile people, to the Greek people? And we look at Paul, and of course he's got this great pedigree as a Jewish person. Man, I am, a, I am a Hebrew born of Hebrews. I am of the nation of Israel. I am of the tribe of Benjamin. I am like a Pharisee when it comes to knowing the law and my righteousness. Man, I am perfect in my righteousness. Uh, he had this, uh, this great pedigree and this great understanding of the Old Testament that allowed him to take this message to the Greek people, this message of Jesus. But he also had other things going for him. He had other capabilities in his life. Uh, he, had, uh, he was a Roman citizen. And we've heard this before. He was, he was a citizen of Rome, and he was able to use his special privileges as a citizen of Rome to further his ministry. Uh, he was fluent in Greek. He could speak the language that all the Greek people were speaking, and he could speak it so well and so fluently and write it so fluently that, that some of these verses are just beautiful, the way he puts them in Greek. And he, he's just an expert at that. Uh, he's a tent maker, so he has a trade. So he can go in and he can support himself when he's on his missionary journeys. Back then, being a tent maker was great. It was uh, kind of like being a, uh, an auto mechanic in, in the United States. Yeah, there, there's always a need for a tent maker back then. Always a need for somebody to be able to repair, repair and to make tents, and Paul could do that. And so he could, could support himself. And then there's just a list of other capabilities Paul has until finally you look at him and you say, this guy, well, no wonder God wanted him. No wonder he was hand chosen. No wonder Christ came to him on the road to Damascus and said, I want you to do this. No wonder he gave him the authority, that he gave him the power, because he had these great capabilities. These abilities, these, these, uh, you know, some of them were things that he grew in his life, and he was responsible for, knowing Greek and knowing the Hebrew scriptures. 
he had to do the work there, but there were other things like the great peace of Rome. There were no wars. He was able to go where he wanted to. The Romans had these great roadways, and they protected the oceans against pirates, and he had all that going for him, too. He didn't do that, but it was still one of his capabilities, one thing he took advantage of uh, in, his, in his life and in, in that world in order to further the message. Well, I was reading the other day that this is actually a way that scientists are coming to judge and to, uh, to rate different countries. That a country's rated can be rated by the capabilities of its citizens. In other words, are the citizens able to participate in the government? Are the citizens able to earn a living? Are they able to have a long life because there's not much violence and because there's good health care? And the more capabilities that the average citizen of a country has, the better off that country is, the better off its people are. So it's just a new way of thinking about, um, I don't know, of, of rating and seeing whether a country is on the right track. And I wonder, is that true in our lives? Can we do the same thing? Can we look at our lives and say, well, I have these capabilities and that's going to help make my life rich and abundant, help me do what I need to do. Why well, not? I think if we use them, then maybe it is. What are we capable of? And what are we using that capability for? Gosh, look at our group here today. Think of all the capabilities that we have here. All the, uh, all the folks, you know, Paul was a tent maker, and here we've got people that know computer code and civil code and tax code, all the criminal code. We have got folks that are healers here in this service healing into the lives of others and difficult, difficult cases of healing. We've got people here who are our great teachers and who can take a child with learning disabilities and teach them how to read. Wonderful capabilities that we have, capacities for doing great things. Just as Paul had his tent making, we have all of these things. And friends, when we can use these things and do uh, use our capabilities to make this world a better place, make it more the world God would, world God would have it be, it's a wonderful thing to be able to be like Paul, to use these capabilities. And we all have them in our lives, and it's not just the work we do, it's our passions as well, it's the art that we do, it's the music that we make. All of these things, special capabilities, and when we use those things for the glory of God, man, that's a great thing. That's what Paul was able to do. You know, he didn't just sit back with that Greek or sit back with his Roman citizenship or with the great opportunities to travel that existed because of the Roman Empire. He got busy. He got on it. He was going to take this great message of the love of Jesus Christ and take it out into the world. And he wasn't going to miss a day or a second or one opportunity to bring these great capabilities out into his world, out into his community. And it's a thing we can do here today as well. You know, that's one thing the church should be. It should be a place where we celebrate our capabilities. And so if you play a musical instrument, then you can come up here and you can celebrate that and bring glory to God through playing. Or uh, if you're talented at uh, uh, working with kids, you can do that. Or writing curriculum, you can do that. All sorts of different ways that we can show our love for God. And I'll tell you, if you don't have the capability, then you, you, can, or you can get it. Right? We can grow in our capabilities, and that's one of the great things. Let me tell you a story about one person who did that, and we saw an example of his work here today. Robert came, uh, been a member here in this church, gosh, long, 10 years, longer than I have, 10 or 12 years. But uh, not long ago, he discovered, he, he thought this church would be capable of uh, taping the sermons and taking the worship services. He thought that that was a capability this church had. And so he learned what he needed to learn, and he's been taping the worship service, hardly ever missing a week. And I can't even remember the last time he missed a week taping. And putting them up on YouTube. And so the people, and there are people all over the country now, are able, you know, people that grew up here at this church are able to watch part of the worship services that we have here, simply because Robert said, I want this church to have that capability. And I want to make myself capable of making that possible. What a blessing that is. And yeah, if, you don't, if you don't have the capability, get it. If you don't see it or you want it, achieve it. If you don't see it happening here at the church, making it happen. Oh. We can bring great blessings to God. Just think of the, the ways we can spread the good news of Jesus Christ when we take this into our heart, when we use our capabilities the way Paul did to spread the good news. And let me tell you, you may be surprised where you find some of these capabilities in your life. I think the best capabilities of all, kind of the ones Paul had, were the ones that, that helped to connect people together. The fact that he could write, the fact that he could communicate, the fact that he could travel, all of these were capabilities that brought people 
people together. And I want you to think about just that this week in your life. What capabilities do you have that bring people together? Music's a great example of that. Music brings people together. Being able to write, that's another thing that can bring people together. Video, the internet brings people together. What are your gifts? What are your capabilities when it comes to bringing people together? And you might be surprised where they are. I was thinking this week, I was in the ICU uh, with my mother-in-law, who's been, uh, she's been uh, in the ICU for over two weeks. Or has been, she's out now, so I'm glad about that, and we're all very thankful about that. But I was sitting there, I was watching, and the nurses were coming in, the technicians, and her family, we were coming in and out, and thinking, you know, all these people, there's nobody who really understands what it is to be in the ICU. I mean, I can't go up to Nancy just like I can't go up to uh, anybody who's here in the church who's in the hospital and say, I know just how you feel. Because I don't. I don't know what it's like to be intubated. I don't know what it's like to have a feeding tube down my throat. I don't know what it's like to not be able to communicate for two or three or four weeks or longer. I don't know what it's to, it is to feel like I'm getting weaker and weaker every day. And knowing that if I do start getting better, which I pray that I would, that, that it's going to take a long time. A long time to get back again. And how important that is to have that person. And suddenly I remembered uh, for Nancy, for my mother-in-law, there was my niece. My niece, Laura, uh, she's in her 20s. She's a beautiful young lady, but she's had terrible health issues ever since she was quite young. And in the last few years, it gotten even worse, and she spent lots of time in the ICU. And she has spent lots of time with a breathing tube and intubated and feeding tubes and all the rest getting weaker and weaker and then finally getting out and being able to do that long road of getting stronger and stronger and better and better. And I realized that now there is that connection between my mother-in-law and my niece, between grandmother and granddaughter. You know, Nancy, my mother-in-law, now understands things about Laura's life that none of us understand. And Laura understands what her grandmother has been through in a way that none of us can. Having experienced all that and that terrible thing of this young woman and this grandmother both having to be in the ICU, having downturns, having to be sedated and intubated and all of that, all of a sudden that is something that God turns into a blessing. And suddenly these women are connected by it and they, as close as they've been, they're even closer now. They understand each other even better. Think about it in your life. Think about it this week, the capabilities you have to connect with another person. It may come from a surprising place, like uh, some challenge you face, some tragedy you have overcome. But remember this, too, that in the end, Paul said, of all these things we have, of all these great capabilities, there is none that matches the capability of us being in a relationship with God. And that happens through Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I think of capabilities that I imagine I have, the capability to get up here and talk, the capability uh, uh, to visit people in the hospital, little things that I've, I've tried to grow in my life, capabilities that I have. I know there's going to be a day where I preach my last sermon, and that's it. And I'll never preach another sermon again. The day will come when I visit, make my last hospital visit, and I will never make another. I will never make another. That is going to come to an end, and that capability is going to come to an end. I may fancy myself a good writer, and there's a day when I'm going to write my last word of my last sentence. And all of these things, as much of a blessing as they are, these capabilities we have to connect with others, they are all finite. But the capability to connect to God through Jesus Christ is infinite. It is timeless. It is something we carry with us through every day of our life and we carry with us into the life to come. I think that's why Paul said, of all these capabilities I have, all these things I'm proud of, they're like nothing. In fact, they're like less than nothing. They're like negatives in my life, things I counted as positives when I began to compare them to a relationship with Jesus Christ, a relationship with God that I can experience now, that can bring me joy and fulfillment, that I can bring all my other capabilities to so that they get stronger and better, and my relationship to God and to Christ gets closer, and all of these things can happen, and I can feel closer and closer to God each and every day. And what a blessing that is. 
So as we think about our capabilities this week, also think about that ultimate capability. The capability you have been given, a free gift. You have not earned it. You have been given the ability to be in relationship with God. Because that's how much God loves you. That's how much God wants to be in relationship with you. So let's each one of us grab our capabilities like tools in a toolbox. Let's get ready for this week ahead to use these capabilities to bring glory to God's name, to connect with those around us, to connect them to one another, and then we can be ready to forget what lies behind, to strain forward to what lies ahead, along with the Apostle Paul, this upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's bow in prayer. Loving God, we have a lot to praise you about and a lot to be grateful for. Loving God, for your gifts that you have given us, the talents that we have had, the opportunities we've had to grow and to learn and to become specialists. Loving God, thank you for giving us the chance that we have had uh, to learn and to grow and to bring our abilities into this world where we can make a difference. Lord, that's what we ask you for now. Help us when we do bring our talents, our gifts, our abilities into this world. May it be a blessing. May it bring true change. May it bring glory to your name. No matter what we're doing, whether it's making a tent or preaching a sermon or talking to someone out on the street, help us to always be a blessing to you. And loving God, we do ask that you bless all of those today who are all of those who are looking for something stronger and something better and something deeper. Loving God, as we come to this, uh, this table, as we prepare to come to this table now, uh, we, we recognize what we are bringing to it. We are all bringing different things and recognize that we are all receiving your love here. And Lord, we do ask that you bless this table, this bread and this cup to the nourishment of our bodies and the nourishment of our spirits. And we ask that you Encourage us to give freely and, and generously uh, to your ministries. We've got all these things we ask in Jesus' name.